I want to say a couple of things that I know you won't agree with, but hear me out. I want to let you all know that sex equals a relationship. And if you ever deal with a female whom you have sex with, and after that sex, she is not convinced that she's in a relationship with you, get rid of her or keep her as a side piece. You're probably thinking, quit. That's crazy. You're telling me if I sleep with the girl, now we're in a relationship? Well, yeah, if she has a soul. Let me rewind you back to a purer time. I went to high school in Los Angeles and I was that guy. And there was one young lady named Dorian. Turbo thick! She was a pretty little brown skin team. Sweet little girl. And I was a boy too, you know. Don't try to R. Kelly me. You're me. I was a kid. She was a kid. We were teenagers. And I remember this like it was yesterday because my mother really stressed me out while I was trying to get this punani. You heard me? Dorian had basically told me like, hey, you're that guy. And I was like, well, then I need to smash. And she was like, for sure. Like, that can happen. And I said, all right, when? She was like, tomorrow after school. I was like, bet, I'm there. So basically my plan was as soon as school over, School was over. I was going to swoop her up in the hoopty. I used to drive a, you know, I think it's like an 86 brown Toyota. But it had beat in it, though. It had beat. But anyways, that was my plan. Next day comes, my mom shoot me a text message off of some like, hey, I need you to go pick up your little brother after school. And I hit her back like, oh, I'm sorry, moms. I can't do it. I can't, I'm tired. I got something very important. She was like, yeah, the important thing you got is pick up your brother. And if you don't, I was like, nah, 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 nah. I have something very critically important. Like, there's, this is the most important thing in the world right now. Like, trust me. And she was like, no, you trust me. I'm going to beat you. You don't go pick up your brother. I was like, it's not my son. I don't have kids. Like, don't he have a father? He ain't got a father. He got a mother, though. You go pick him up. I can't be bothered. I have something to do. And she was like, listen, if you don't pick him up, don't come home. Don't come home. I was like, oh, man. And I was in a a quandary. I was like, how do I smash this turbo thick female? And this is back in the day. You heard me like, I grew up in an era where females didn't watch uh, adult movies. You feel me? I grew up in an era where females weren't video gamers. Like the world was normal. They weren't OF models. They weren't, you know, passing it out like it's Costco samples. You really had to be somebody to get you a piece. So anyways, I'm just tripping like, yo, like, I could be homeless and despised by my mother and family, or I could smash this thick female. Now, mind you, I think I was a good kid. I think I was pretty much a good kid for the most part, you know, comparatively, you know, in a ghetto coming from a criminal family. And uh, I remember like it was yesterday, man. That day came and I was like, pick up my younger brother who's not my son. I'm not his mother or his father. I'm not his legal guardian. I've been a great brother. Smash this turbo thick female. I'm like, how often do I get to smash? Like never. I think I maybe only had like one body, maybe two bodies. You feel me? So uh, I made the decision, the executive decision. I was like, nah, Dorian need to get this pipe. She about to get this pipe, right? So, you know, ring, ring, six, you know, ding, ding, whatever it was. Six, I was zoned out anyway. Six period ends. It's time to go get this smash. And you heard me? Six period end. I get a phone call. It's my mom. She's like, boy, I know you ain't thinking you ain't gonna go pick him up. I just want to call to remind you. I'm like, oh, gosh. All right. So I had to break the news to Dorian. I was like, look, I can't even do this right now. And she was like, oh, that's okay. And in my head, I was like, nah, that's not okay. Like, there's nothing okay about this. You don't pass up a piece. You heard me back. You don't pass up a piece at age 16. That might be your only piece you get offered that year. You feel me? You don't pass up a piece. So anyways, I was like, look, uh, what you going to be doing a little bit later? Because she was like, well, I thought, you know, we were going to do what we don't do. And you're just going to drop me off at my house. I was like, yeah, but like later though, when are you free? Like, can you get out? Like, what's happening though? And, you know, we had worked out something to where she could, you know, make a little bit of time. So I went, swooped up my brother, dropped him off. I cannot 
tell you how I looked at my little brother when I now I love my little brother. You're I really do love my little brother. But when I went to go pick him up from school, I looked at that ball like like he was like I was a a a white slave master and he had just been recaptured after fleeing the plantation after having led a violent slave revolt that killed one of my children and injured my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like I looked at him like that with like complete vitriol, hatred and anger, just, just temporarily though. But anyways, so, you know, I took him back to the house and I had to sit with him until my mom got, got off work. And I was just like, man, this single parent life ain't for me. You feel me? Like this single mother life is like, is really affecting everybody negatively. And based on this, we all know single mothers are, are a detrimental thing for society and for me getting laid at 16. Anyway, so, um, you know, moms finally get home. I look at her like she's filled with the devil, like she's pure evil. And, and maybe, you know, maybe she was. Maybe that's why pops left. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's how she became a single mother. These kind of bad decisions keeping me away from this super, super thick, thick female. And the crazy thing, this is natural thickness, that Zulu thickness. This is not BBL. This is before all that. This is the good old days. So anyways, as soon as she came home, I looked at her like she was a real scummy, dirtbag individual for going to work trying to provide for us kids. I looked at her like she was the scum of the earth, and I really meant it, too. Anyways, I was like, am I done here? Are my duties done as a single mother? I'm finished. You're clocking me out. I'm tapping you in. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So I get on the, uh, the, the Nokia. It was the Nokia back then. I called up Shorty. I was like, what up, though? She's like, nothing. I was like, yeah, I could be over there in like 15. Mind you, this was probably like a 30-minute drive, but when you need it in your life, this is about to be a 15-minute drive. She was like, okay, you know, she was like, just don't pull up in front of my house. Just when you get here, just be like a block down and call me. I was like, for sure. I followed them directions to the T. So anyway, I pull up, you know what I'm saying? I bang her line. I'm out here. She's like, okay, give me a little bit of time. They always take longer than you want. She she came, you know, eventually she walked up to the whip. She hopped in. I remember this like it was yesterday. We drive off. We're kind of like looking for some spizz outs. You already know where this is going down. Hotel on wheels, you did. We about to get in the backseat. Believe that. Um, so I pull over at uh, this uh, movie theater. Pull into the parking lot, the rear parking lot of the movie theater. Kind of not where the consumer is supposed to park. It's probably where they do unloading and loading kind of stuff uh, for the concession snacks is my guess. But I pull in the back. There's nobody there. And I back in, you know, just in case anything pop off. And we got in the back seat and the pants came off. And she was like grown woman thick. You feel me? She was grown woman adult thick. Now, I'm trying to remember why I'm telling the story. Ah, aha. Okay, anyways, you know, it went down. Um, it was amazing. Brief, because I was 16. You know how that go, but it was amazing. Here's my point. I remember showing up to school the next day. I'm with the homie, Crazy Rob, my goonie. You feel me? And so, um, you know, we belling down the hallway. And, you know, one of my wolves walked up on me. He was like, Dorian, your girlfriend? I was like, what? <laughs> stop it. Please stop it. What are you talking about? He was like, yeah, she's telling everybody that you're her boyfriend. I was like, what? That's crazy. He was like, yeah, no, nah, everybody. She told everybody that you're her boyfriend. And I was like, nah, that's wild. Like, that's sick. And then I like walked up on her. I was like, like, are you wilding? She was like, what do you mean? I was like, you're telling people I'm your boyfriend? She was like, you are. She was like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm not your boyfriend. Like, don't you have to like agree to that? Like discuss that? She was like, but what about yesterday? I was like, what? Was that like a contractual? That was a contractual engagement? I thought like you was just getting maxed out and that was that. Like I didn't, I never said I wanted you to be my girlfriend. She was like, but, but we... We did. I was like, yeah, but I don't think that's how that works. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. In high school, I was a goon, uh, truly. So, uh, um, yeah, let's just say I was a goon. I'm not going to elaborate. Point is this. She was a sweet, pure-hearted young woman. And in her mind, if you give your body, you are bound to that man. You're essentially in a relationship. And that's really how it should be when a female is a, a good person, has a soul, doesn't have a whole bunch of bodies. 
know, she lays down with you. You go inside of her, you are bonded. That's your, that's your old lady now. That's how it should be. Now, granted, in high school, I was a savage. Not like pretend savage, like you guys say figuratively. I'm like really a savage outside. So anyways, I say that to say this. If you lay down with a woman and she doesn't view you as like her man now after you smashed, you're dealing with a woman who's had a ton of bodies, who has no soul, she's heartless. Her body means nothing to her. Not only does it perhaps mean nothing to you, it means nothing to her. If she parts with her body, but feels like it's okay to give you her body, let you into her body, but still she wouldn't in parallel let you into her heart and give you commitment and expect commitment from you. If she doesn't expect those things and she's detached physicality, lovemaking and you know intercourse, she's detached all that from emotional connection that lets you know that something in her is broken that will probably not be healed. And more importantly, there's very few ways, probably none, that you can become truly special to that woman because she's had all of the experiences in this human life. She's done all the things you can do, probably in all of the holes you can do it in. So the point is that if you sleep with a woman and she's not all of a sudden like, hey, we're in a relationship, right? Yeah, um, she's a scallywag. She's a side piece. She's a one hitter quitter. She ain't the one. You're welcome. I know there's a lot of females listening like, Marquette, we're liberated. No, you are liberated. You're also a thought. And it's okay. It's okay. I'm just speaking for the, the good people of the earth. You see, I'm speaking for the good people. And we must acknowledge that there, you know, there are good people and, and there are not so good people. You're one of the not so good people if you're a woman saying, you know, I don't have to be in a relationship with a man if I'm sleeping with him. Keep living like that. Fantastic. You're not a good person. I'm speaking to the good people. If you're a female and you want to be a good woman, this is how it goes. If you're a man and you want to know she's a good woman, this is how she should feel after you've maxed her out. You should see higher levels of uh, submissiveness. You should see higher levels of commitment, higher levels of engagement, higher levels of service after you went in a rib. And that's not because you did a good job. Cause I promise you, I've not been doing a good job at all, ever. They be telling me I'm doing a good job, but I'd be like, how Sway? How? That must be love. Cause I'm not doing a good job. I'm, I'm not even trying. Point is, um, if you don't see that change in her behavior and the way she relates to you and looks at you, something's wrong. Now, ladies, you're like, well, what about the guy after he gets some of this good? Shouldn't he be feeling different? No, 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 he shouldn't. Video over. 